Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's a podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike, and uh, today, given the pertinence of the topic, I figured I would try and take the time to discuss and I guess kind of analyze the you know the controversies and the discussions surrounding um stellar blade right um now for older listeners returning to the show or even newer listeners joining me uh, joining me for the first time uh welcome I I swear I'm not just trying to pivot into just talking about video games I do intend on wanting to talk about like you know movies and television shows you know and tv too it's just for some reason at the moment i have video games on the brain so what are you gonna do but uh back to the topic at hand stellar blade for those of you who maybe don't follow the video game scene or live under rock or you know even bless your souls don't engage with social media uh, Stellar Blade was a recently released uh, action game. I believe it takes inspirations from like Dark Souls, Nier Automata. Um, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to play it myself as, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have a PS5. And at the moment, it's only available on PS5. But it might be like a timed release where eventually it will release on Steam. So that, that should be interesting. Hopefully it gets a, a decent port. Um, but uh, yeah, for, from what I've seen of the game, it looks about average. I think depending on what spheres you engage with online, it quote unquote infamously got a seven from IGN, which honestly I think makes sense from what I've seen. It doesn't really do anything that revolutionary with like its combat or its storytelling, but that is not necessarily what I'm here to discuss because I think a lot of the because obviously a lot of the you know discussions around this game is around its main character, which I believe her name is Eve. Um, so again, for those of you who don't know, when this game was first being teased and shown off at like game shows, the main like appeal of this game was the design of its main character Eve, who is very a very sexualized female uh, you know female character. I I don't know if like. I think she's like a robot in the context of the game. Doesn't really matter, you know, hypersexualized female character. Um, and obviously you had, you know, the whole culture war thing where a lot of people were um, saying, oh, this is, this character represents like the end of wokeness in video games or what have you. And then you had, you know, other people obviously raising concerns about like, you know, the sexualized nature of her, of her design and, you know, appealing to the male gaze, what have you. Um, you see, if I, if I was a small, smarter content creator, I should have covered this, like, sooner as these things, instead of, like, kind of doing it all in one episode here. But, you know, what are you going to do? So what's my take on, you know, her whole design? And I guess I, I could branch it out into broadly the approach of, like, sexuality in video games. Because for myself, I've tried to relax on this topic. I mean, I've been swept up in, like, culture war stuff, too. The big one for me was, like, the costume design changes from, like, MK9 to MKX was like a really huge one for me so um and you know when you're defending a position you try you know i think sometimes your mind you try and take like the strongest form of your position but you know in regards to trying to be more open with like my own sexuality as well as the expression of sexuality broadly in games i want to try and approach this with like a nuanced approach because for me, the issue isn't like, oh my God, she's like in, you know, hyper sexualized or whatever. She has like an overly sexual design. I, I think like overly sexual designs can work in the context, of the light, but it has to be put in the context of the story you're trying to tell. Right. And I get people's concerns. Like, I don't want games, I don't want female characters in games to just be defaulted or regulated to just eye candy for the player you know i just don't think that's very conducive to like good storytelling of video games i think it just a lot of it depends on again the type of story you're trying to tell and sometimes i find it distracting the example i would give 
is like what they were trying to do with MK9, where you know that you you could tell they were trying to approach like a serious you know story with like their single player you know like story mode, but it's kind of distracting when like a lot of female characters are in effectively stripper wear. Like, let's be real here. Um, even if it goes against their character, like so, like the you know Sonya Blade or whatever. But um, so focusing on stellar blade I, I for me it's kind of a similar issue like when i i feel like her design is just very lazy and pandering you know like it, it wasn't done as a means of like saying anything interesting with her sexuality you know with you know her sexuality or being like purposeful to like the character uh it was just as a means to appeal to like horny gamers which hey i get it sometimes you know you know, I like junk food too with my, you know, media sometimes, but it's just, yeah. I, I, you know, cre- we, we are working within a creative medium and creativity does like earn you a lot of like, you know, good points, right? Um, the contrast I always like to give is like with, you know, Bayonetta, I think is like a fun example of like doing like an over sexualized design well because of how committed they are to it i i think i remember from interviews like the design that they took with bayonetta was like oh not not that she's just sexy but they went with like this idea of a runway model so that affected like her model affected how she animates and how she moves and attacks and even like to some degree like her personality and uh you know a lot of people praise bayonetta's design i think it's a very interesting design um you know, same thing could be like if you want to take like a Western game perspective, uh, Baldur's Gate 3, I think, you know, you have obviously very like sexual characters, but I think the character's sexuality is oftentimes plays into like their story arcs. My favorite example is like uh, Karlak. No, is that you say her name? Like Karlak? Um, yeah, Karlak. Basically, her whole thing is that when you romance her, she can't touch other people because she, you know her skin is hot to the touch she's you know a, a demon basically and uh you know throughout the story you eventually find a way that you can like effectively suppress her hot skin so she can finally touch people and it's like this really sweet moment of like you know how the character grows with her sexuality it's not just her being sexy you know it it serves like an interesting story function and so for me, that's just the main issue with Stellar Blade is that, I mean, granted, I, I don't know if maybe the game does explore more. I'm, again, I'm trying to give as much good faith to the fans of like Stellar Blade as I can. I mean, not too much. So we'll get to that later. But um, yeah, that, that was my um, main issue with it. Um, but... Now, post the game being launched, and I believe they recently had um, an initial patch for the game. I, I don't know when the patch was released, but with the patch came some changes to uh, costumes and certain background um, aesthetics. Like uh, people are dubbing it like it's like it's a soft. Sen- I, I see it as more like a soft censorship. So from what I've read from uh, some of these threads is that. The two main ones I've noticed is, like, there was a piece of graffiti in the game that was next to, like, a a sign to where basically it read, like, hard R, right? And Sony decided to change that because for those, maybe some some more of my foreign listeners, uh, hard R in, you know, the Western world is referenced to, like, a slang term referring to, like, the hard N-word, right? Um, so they decide to change, I, they just decided to change the graffiti art to, you know, so it doesn't have that reference. Uh, the other one is that there was changes to a lot of Eve's, um, costumes. Uh, in particular, I think most of the costumes, it, it, it's like they, for any parts where she showed like more cleavage, they decided to cover it up with like, like a piece of fabric so it shows like less cleavage um throwing a bone to like the cellar blade community again i don't want to like necessarily both sides this or whatever 
Um, but I I do kind of think that they should just have the uncensored version of these costumes because I, I don't know. To me, like the changes are so minuscule that. I don't see how they really matter. It, it's like a weird thing that a lot of Japanese games do when they get ported over here to America is that, you know, the more sexual designs over there are like kind of played down for an American audience. Um, so they'll like cover, they'll cover up cleavage and, you know, stuff like that. But for given like the sexualized nature of like Eve's design, I just I just don't think it really makes that much of a difference. Like, oh, we can't see like an inch le we see we we can't see an inch more of her cleavage. Like, I don't know. I just I just think like it just doesn't really like matter that much uh, in, in terms of that. But um, now I now. The hard art, like graffiti sign thing, I think that should not be. I think that should remain censored. Like, frankly, a lot of the people trying to defend that, you look weird defending it. I'm sorry, from like an outside perspective, it just looks so weird that you're trying to die on this hill because, like, to me, it's such a, it's like a such a small part of the game because it's not even like a costume design. It's just like one piece of graffiti and. Again, I want to approach this whole topic in good faith. Um, also with like the devs, because you know they're not like American devs. I think they might have just like not known about the whole term hard R, right? Uh, the whole slang of hard R. So, uh, given them the benefit, and for whatever reason, it was missed by the like the localization team. That um, I I don't want to. I'm basically try not trying to uh, ascribe like malice. To the dev team i don't think they meant to keep the graffiti up like that especially because it's such like a random thing to keep right it like it doesn't serve much to the greater purpose of the game at least i don't think so um but yeah so i i just just don't die on the hill it just doesn't look good optically to be like i want that hard r graffiti sign combo in this game like okay dude but yeah for the costumes like come on let let them have their horny costumes you know um uh, but at the same time i don't really have much conviction for this one way or another like if the game stays censored Again, because I I see the changes as so small, like so like minuscule to her design, I could go either way. Um, I mean, maybe the best compromise would be like uh, an options filter for it. I don't know why games don't opt for that more. Like you know, older Resident Evil had ways where you could change the blood, and that was always fun to mess around with. So I mean, maybe that would be a good compromise for it. Um. Or, I don't know, maybe they'll go for selling, like, an uncensored version of Stellar Blade down the line. Which, again, is also a weird thing that video, that I don't think video games really do. Not that I know of, because that's, like, more of a common thing that you see with movies, right? Especially with, like, horror films, you get, like, the theatrical, yeah, theatrical cut, and then down the line you get, like, the director's cut. So, maybe they could do something like that. Like, you could argue it would be scummy to do that. Um... But, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, but um, another aspect of this, too, is that recently Hellblade released a trailer, and in that trailer they showed a design for... Wait, is it Hellblade? No. No, it's not Hellblade. Um, Hades. Hades 2 showed off, like, a uh, gameplay, like, demonstration uh, for... Um, um, for its upcoming sequel and you know a lot of the stellar blade fans or like the people that are in you know that are in this camp of like having stellar of wanting stellar blade uncensored are like well wait a minute why are you praising the design for aphrodite in hades 2 while also condemning eve eve's design in um you know uh stellar blade and here's the thing i don't really like to appeal to like you know hypocrisy or whatever because you know if you scrutinize anyone's you know behavior far enough you'll eventually find a point where um 
people will be hypocritical. It's just the nature of like us, I, I think, navigating our ideas. But again, I will also throw the stellar or the stellar blade fans a bone here and say that I don't like Aphrodite's design in Hades too. For the same reason. I also think it's kind of lazy, to be honest. Now, what do I mean by that? Um so for those of you who don't know, Aphrodite in Hades 2 is basically just um, a naked woman, right? Now, not to say that the art style isn't like the character looks good because the art style does look good, but I, I think like conceptually, I, I see it as um, like lazy because it's just like, oh, how do we represent this like goddess of sex? Yeah. It, Aphrodite is the goddess of like sex and love, right? Yeah, love and beauty. Um, naked woman. Like, it's kind of been done before, you know? Uh, good art style aside. Like, here's what I would have done. And keep in mind, I'm not like a game designer or developer or anything like that. But if, if I wanted to take something more unique with this approach, one of the kind of issues with a lot of depiction of Aphrodite I find is that you know she's meant to represent like you know again love and beauty but it's usually filtered through like like the male gaze right um so what I would have done and it also would have gotten a lot of controversy a lot of flack too probably from like the same people but I would have taken like make, make Aphrodite non-binary right Split her design in half, like two face, right? But have like one half be a hypersexualized uh, masculine characteristic, and then like have one side be hypersexualized feminine, right? So it's like, oh, she's a god of love and beauty, but for everyone, not just for one particular group of people. Um, but I mean, I get why they went with like naked female as her design um you know especially like in our culture uh you know beauty is often regulated to just like feminine presenting people you know but that's just kind of i don't know i just i, I just think you could do more with the design so yeah i will throw a little bone i also don't like um this design and ultimately i i think i wish to see both games um uncensored albeit you know in their own in their own ways um but we'll see what comes of this there was like a petition i know started by somebody to un like to quote unquote free stellar blade uh and i just don't care i i just i just don't care like i said i i think these the changes that they made to stellar blade are so small that you know like Preferably keep it uncensored, but if it's censored, I'm not going to, like, you know, lose my mind over it. it. It's the nature of, like, the industry, too. You know, um, again, I don't like to point to hypocrisy for, like, my arguments, but, you know, it, it seems like there's an uproar for this, but then, like, you have instances, like, Resident Evil gets uh, censored in Japan for, like, its gore, but people seem to be okay with that because, you know... Um, Japan has a history of depictions of gore because of, you know, an incident years ago with, I think, the be the beheading of, like, a like a student or something like that. Um, I, I don't know the full details of it, but I don't know. It just seems, like, weird to hyperfixate on, like, this particular aspect of censorship when it happens all the time. It's just, like, a, you know, a thing that happens um, in games and, you know... It is what it is, right? Um, I mean, hopefully when the... St I mean, I mean, we'll see what, what comes of it, but... Um, yeah, uh, oh, there was also one other thing that more recently came up. I know, like, a streamer, I think Denim's TV is how you say her name. Uh, there was, like, a lot of controversy because the one person that put up the... Um, the petition who's been very vocal about this has had, like, a you know, a quote-unquote bounty put on his head for, uh, you know, be, for being as outspoken on this as it is. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, probably don't don't joke about putting bounties on people's heads. But in their defense, granted, I am not like a lawyer. I only study. I mean, I studied criminal justice for my undergraduate degree. But from my understanding, the whole statement is, you know, get rid of this person. But I, I think like in American law, like threats have to be more specifically defined. Like they have to be more directly defined. It can't be something as vague as like get him, get rid of him. Um, because, uh, you know, that could just mean get rid of him off of like Twitter or X or whatever. Right, so I I don't know if that's gonna really pan out into anything, and I, you know, it's just the nature of like social media. Sometimes you have to deal with like a lot of heat, uh, vocalizing you know your thoughts and ideas. Like you know, a lot of public figures um, get death threats, and it is unfortunate. And I I do discourage my own audience from you know putting out death threats for any of this or whatever like it's it's not worth it it's such a it's such a, like give it time i think it, it, this will just blow over and people will just move on to the next uh culture war thing um i think those were all the main points i had to discuss um with this uh thank you all so much uh for joining me as a bit of kind of an update for the program, uh, I've decided to sunset the Patreon, Ko-Fi, and the merch store as I kind of, uh, you know, want to restructure, like, the, the nature of the show broadly. But on the flip side, uh, my episodes are now, at least through YouTube, licensed through uh, Creative Commons. So if you want to, you know you know post this on your own thing analyze or whatever you have my permission to be careful with other platforms because these episodes also go on spotify and i don't know how spotify manages its um uh, copyright claim system i i don't know how automated it is uh for those of you who don't know i had an episode recently that was a uh, copyright strike because uh spotify did not update their uh the copyright system to include uh, recent public domain movies, and I happen to have used a recently uh, a movie that was recently released into the public domain, so I got a strike for that. But it was cleared up pretty fast. So, if for whatever reason you're streaming while you know um, remixing this video or whatever, and you get an issue with copyright claim, just try and message me, and I can and I'll help you to the best of my ability. But that will do it for me, and uh, yeah, later.